From Morgantown to Wheeling, Charleston to Martinsburg, West Virginia Public Broadcasting is a service that thrives when we all join together to tell West Virginia's story. Your monthly gift of $10 or $15 does just that. Become a sustainer today. You're watching West Virginia Public Broadcasting. From West Virginia Public Broadcasting. Support for the legislature today is provided by AARP West Virginia, your ally for real possibilities in the Mountain State. Learn more at aarp.org wv. The Charleston Gazette Mail, using its CGM app to deliver the latest news, traffic, and weather alerts, keeping you in the know while you're on the go. Lumos Networks, online at lumosnetworks.com. Marshall University, with more than 100 degree programs offered in four locations and online. More about the Marshall family at marshall.edu. Orion Strategies, professional public relations, government affairs, creative services, and research and polling with offices in Charleston, Buchanan, Martinsburg, Pittsburgh, and Columbus. Good evening and welcome to the Legislature Today from the Capitol Building in Charleston. A huge education reform bill was unveiled today in the Senate Education Committee. We'll be joined in just a bit by the presidents of the West Virginia Education Association and the American Federation of Teachers, West Virginia chapter. But first, right now, I'm joined by Dave Mistich, senior reporter, to help me uh, set up the day's discussion, the day's events. A, a huge meeting this afternoon on what is, was and is a very strategically crafted bill where Republicans have paired the teacher pay raise and a PEIA huge investment to a host of other reforms that are we, we know are objected to by the teacher unions. Right, and of course, everyone remembers what happened last year, the strike, the nine-day teacher strike. Um, you know, the, the pay raises, the PEIA uh, funding was, was front and center with, with all that. But the leaders of the teachers unions, as I'm sure you'll hear from them later this evening, um, there were the whole host of other issues that they took issue with. Um, and again, the PEIA and the, the, the pay raises sort of took took control of the conversation, but those other issues we saw all around the Capitol, teachers, the union members, uh, union leaders fighting against, you know, seniority, paycheck protection, um, you know, charter schools is in the bill this year, um, you know, county boards uh, able to increase statutory levy rates, um, you know, teacher pupil ratios being changed, all a whole host of things, all up and down. and. Um, very controversial at this point. And it's been a really tightly kept secret. I mean, we've all been trying to, to get some some details about this for, for days. Right, and not just the, the press and the general public. I, I th from what I understand, Democrats over here in the Senate, um, they didn't see a copy of the bill until this morning. So, um, you know, there's it's been very under wraps from what we understand. And, um, you know, there was only a draft of that bill that was discussed in committee today. I want to start with um, Senator, Senator Patricia Rucker's uh, opening remarks. She was setting the parameters of what would be about a one-hour meeting. Uh, let's take a, a listen to that right now. Before we get started, I want to let everybody know this is just going to be a presentation. We are not going to delve deeply. Um, I know that the draft was only made available just a few hours ago, so we are going to give the committee plenty of you know, time to digest it and look over it overnight. So after this presentation, we will probably have another meeting tomorrow that will be announced, 
and that's when we will actually start asking questions, maybe have some speakers and other, you know, deep discussion of the bill. So I just want to let everybody know that from the front, up front. We want to note that we have invited uh, the chairwoman to join us on the legislature today, the evening program, uh, a few times, two or three times, and she has been unable uh, because of her schedule. So, Dave, where, where did it go from here? Well, you know, right as soon as she sort of laid the groundwork, set the parameters of what that meeting would be like, uh, Senator Mike Romano, he's a Democrat, he asked what the timeline of getting this bill out is, uh, you know, for the committee. Um, you know, with them just receiving it, I think a lot of Democrats want to take their time, want to iron out the details. Um, she didn't really give him a straight answer, but, you know, I, he asked if it would be this week, as in tomorrow or next week during meetings. Um, you know, he, he didn't really necessarily get an answer, but by the way that the, the talks of the meeting, you know, once they had gotten through this presentation, um, it sort of indicated that they're looking to get as far uh, through it tomorrow as possible. And then after that, there were a couple other um, uh, Democrats that had concerns, had questions. Uh, at the very end, uh, at, at the beginning, she said there, there wouldn't be any questions, but there, were, there was some time at the end. That's right. Um, Senator um, Steve Baldwin, Greenbrier County, is also a Democrat. He asked what version of the bill that they were going to address tomorrow. Um, over the course of this meeting, um, the, the committee council uh, Hank Hager uh, outlined, you know, the provisions of the bill. He would cite pages and, and different sections of the bill. Um, but there were some, there was always some questions as to what version the, the, the senators on the committee were looking at. Um, it's my understanding that they had three different versions in front of them uh, at the time. Um, and then there would be a fourth um, that they would be taking a look at tomorrow. So, you know, a lot of questions as to like what, what version of the bill they were looking at within committee. Um, so that was one of the big ones there. And then Senator Beach had, had a concern. Right, and, and so as the meeting was, was wrapping up, Senator Bob Beach asked when, where, where and when the public would be able to see the bill. You know, considering this is a bill originating in committee, it's technically not formally introduced until it clears the committee and makes it to the Senate clerk and onto the floor, um, and then goes back to the second uh, reference, the second committee that's referenced on the bill. Um, so. Technically, it's just in a draft mode at this point. Um, you know, uh, because of that, all this conversation about the public and, and all of the interest surrounding this bill, it's, the Senate Clerk's Office has released a version of that bill. It is public. You can take a look at what they're going to be discussing tomorrow, and you can find that you know on online or, or through the Senate Clerk's Office. And again, it is a huge bill. It's already evoking a, a lot of emotion. There's a lot of uh, attention uh, th throughout uh, for the bill. And this morning, we thought it was, um, it, it, it's important to note that uh, the Senate Majority Leader, Tom Tabuco, or Tacubo, excuse me, uh, he was trying to prep everyone uh, in, in the Senate chamber for what was about to come. And let's just take a listen to, to his remarks this morning. And there's going to be things that every member in this body likes. There's going to be some things they don't like. The only thing I would ask is that before you dig your heels in the sand and say, you know, I'm going to be against uh, A, B, and C, look to see how you can make it better first. Look to see if there's anything you can possibly think of that may make that ideal better because everything contained in this bill has worked somewhere or multiple places, and that's why it's there. So maybe it's not the right fit or maybe the, the exact details isn't the right fit, but what I would ask is, is just take a look at it and see if you think you can make it better, make you, see if you can fix it first before we just adamantly say no because I think the only thing that is wrong, we've got the brightest kids these guys in front of us, I'm sure, have futures that I would put up second to none. We've got the best teachers. I would put them up against any teacher in the country. But our system's still broken. We're still finishing last, 47th to 50th place. So in my opinion, the only thing I think that we can truly do wrong is nothing at all. Our guests tonight, Mr. Dale Lee, president of the West Virginia Education Association, and Mr. Fred Albert, President of the American Federation of Teachers, West Virginia Chapter. Thank you both uh, for joining me this evening. Um, first, before we get into any of the specifics that were unveiled in the, this afternoon's meeting, just perhaps let's let's start with some, um, you know, o 
just some broad thoughts about the process leading up to now, um, what you've heard this afternoon, uh, just reflections on the tone, the focus, the philosophy that you find in, 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 in the bill before us. Mr. Albert, we'll begin with you. Thank you very much, mm -hmm. and thanks for having me here. I, I guess the first word that comes to my mind is confusion. Uh, it seemed to be, to me, in that room, in the committee room today, there was lots of confusion, especially from those senators who had not been able to see a copy of this proposed bill in the draft form. Um, there were rumors before today's meeting of what might be in there. You know, we've heard other people on radio shows talking about their proposals, but confusion seems to be the key word that I, I keep hanging on to because I'm still somewhat confused as to what is going to be in this bill. All right, Mr. Lee. Well, I kind of felt like I was in the animal house with the double secret probation uh, <laughs> because you, there were so many versions that were secretive and you didn't know what was coming out. But uh, a part of me is not confused because they made it clear in, in some of the things in this bill that their in, intent is to promote education for a few, not for all the public school children of West Virginia. And one of the first things that was glaring to me is that all educational research will show you that by the lower class size is, the more uh, student achievement rises. So what did we do in this bill? We increased it in grades one through six from 25 to the possibility of 31. That was one of the many that, components that they unveiled. That was one of the many unveiled. components mm -hmm. in, in, the, in the bill. So on one hand, you're saying that we really want to be innovative and, and do th great things, and that's why we need to charter school. But by the same token, since you're taking money away from public schools, you have to fund that somehow. And their answer to fund it? that's okay, we'll just increase the class size in, in one through six to as much as 31. We're not really concerned about all the students in West Virginia when you're doing that. And, and also they, they um, tied a, a, an incentive for teachers to, to take on those, those uh, bigger classes. They were encouraging the bigger classes. And the teachers, the elementary teachers will tell you that even adding that one extra person, right now they can have 20, 25, and go up to 28, but even adding that one student makes the world a difference, and it's not worth the small amount of pay that you receive. It, it disrupts the class, it, it makes it much more difficult to, to really reach all the kids. They would rather not have that incentive and have the lower class size. Um, of course, the, the leadership was, was bracing for the reaction uh, to, the, to the unveiling of this bill. Uh, the Senate President, Mitch Carmichael, had a few words to, to say to us right after uh, the session this morning before, before the education meeting. We'll go take a listen to that now. I'm certain that uh, there are some uh, teachers and some union leaders that uh, would rather just have uh, an enormous pay raise, which is a component of this bill, and not reform the system in any manner. But I'm confident that uh, really great teachers want to, want to have the opportunity to do their job in the best possible manner. And I believe, I'm completely committed to the fact this bill enables teachers to do their job, that they're trained to do, and gets the state out of the way, and compensates them accordingly. Mr. Albert, your reaction to that? Well, I'm glad that Senate, uh, Senate President Mitch Carmichael was waiting on us to respond, and I'm sure he knew that we would be. And I, I would question what does he think an enormous pay raise is, because I heard him say that if this pay raise that's being proposed goes through, then teachers will have gained a $5,000 pay raise within two years. Teachers got about a $2,020 pay raise last year on the average. Uh, so that means we're going to get almost another 3,000 this year, and that's enormous. You know, my, my body of members this year at our legislative session voted on a three-year package that would gain us $15,000 over the next three years, which would probably be a really nice pay raise, which would keep us competitive with other states. But um, we're not opposed to reform if it's really reforming education. And as uh, Dale Lee just said, if you're going to reform and help every student in West Virginia, reform does not mean to increase class size. So to Senator Carmichael, 
I would say if you want to talk about reform, why don't you talk to us? We haven't been at the table with Senator Rucker or any of the other uh, Republican senators to talk about what educational reform really should look like in this state. You did not have uh, input or consultation into this omnibus bill. Yeah. Absolutely and, not. And if you look at what Senator Rucker said at the beginning of the meeting, it was after discussions with, with several groups. The group she left out is, in my opinion, the experts of public education and that's the teachers and service professionals who deal with the students each and every day. If you want to make true reform happen in West Virginia, why are you not listening to the teachers and the, and the service professionals who are in the classroom every day, who are with these kids every day, who know exactly what's needed to advance student achievement? That's a group that was left out, and that should have been the first group that you had in to discuss about education reform. You both have expressed um displeasure that there are so many different issues thrown into one bill that the you know the salary bill the PEIA component should be separate from all of these other reforms mm -hmm. that, that, that's exactly right we call that a clean bill we know that the governor Governor Justice, on the State of the State Address, he proposed a teacher pay raise, a pay raise for service personnel and state employees. He also proposed out of the budget to infuse PEIA with $150 million over the next couple of years to help shore up the PEIA budget. That's a clean, that would be a clean pay bill. But all of these other items, which we call sort of Christmas, Christmas treeing it up, uh, let's let this bill stand alone. A pay raise bill should stand alone. All of these other added pieces just make it most confusing and to me it's a way to kill a pay raise for our state employees and for our teachers. And it's not just us saying it. It's not just the, the teachers organizations that's saying it. It's the entire educational community that's saying it. The superintendents association saying it. The principals association are saying it. The service professionals are saying it as long as as well as us. The, the six organizations are, are in a, uh, a consortium that, that we are demanding that public education be a top priority and the, one of the first components of that is that you have to have qualified teachers and service professionals in the classroom and on the buses and in, in the schools. That has to happen. You'll hear more about that uh, on Monday. Let's talk about the, the um, component of charter schools. That took up a lot of the explanation. It seems like it's a very big part of, of this bill. Um, there, was, there was confusion as to what, uh, what the term actually meant. Absolutely. It's confused with innovation grants, which we've had before. And, you know, we've had many schools operating under innovation schools or innovation grants, and that gives a lot of flexibility to those schools to do innovative programs. But unfortunately, those became defunded. They've been around for quite a while, but those are totally different than charter schools. And there was a lot of confusion trying to say that an innovation grant or a school that receives an innovation grant is a charter school. Well, when the, in attorney fact they are actually, not. the attorney actually said that they are not actually right. charter schools, that that term was used so they could qualify for federal funds. Mm -hmm. And then Senator Unger jumped all over that. Absolutely. And then there was some walking back by, um, by uh, Senator Rucker. Oh, mm -hmm. yes, they are. So I don't think that was cleared up at no, all. It wasn't. And, and, and that, that's going to be looked into, I'm sure. And, and innovation zones worked because the faculty decided what innovative ideas they wanted to happen at their school. There had to be an, a vote of 80% of the faculty before you could even go forward. That's why they were successful. We saw things happen out of innovation zones like communities and schools, the alternative education for elementary schools, the way we do mentoring for our teachers. All of that came through innovation zones, and yet we defunded that. And now suddenly we want to call something a charter school that maybe is a charter school that's not a charter school that might be. We don't know just to get federal funds. That's not the way to reform education. The way to reform education is go to the experts and listen to the, their, 
views on what has to happen. Well, they, they likened it to the Mountaineer Challenge Academy, which is, which is run and sponsored by the, the West Virginia National Guard, mm -hmm. and um, that's quite successful and, and quite impressive. It is, but that's a, that's a type of alternative education setting. And, and we could do many of the things, same things under our innovation zone, the alternative school setting part of that, but they quit funding that. Uh, there are ways that, that we can improve education in, in West Virginia. There are some things that we can do. Increasing the class size is not one of them. Having a charter school for a select few is not one of the answers. The answer is let's roll up our sleeves, get the experts in, and decide where we need to go with education. Our teachers, I, I'm convinced, and Fred and I both get to travel and see great things happen in West Virginia. Our teachers are so good that if you ask them, tell them where you want them to be and give them the funding and the resources and the time that they need, they will not only get your students there, but they will get them beyond there. That's how good our teachers are in West Virginia. Mr. Albert, were there components of what was uh, rolled out today that, that you can support and get behind and are glad uh, that are being suggested this year? I saw very little that I could really get behind and, and support at this point because as I started out by saying there was a lot of confusion there. There are what too many the, other pieces. The, the, the accrued leave going toward uh, health care at retirement That time. would be a positive, absolutely, mm -hmm. because we have a lot of newer teachers since things changed um, that that would be beneficial to. So that was a positive. Yes, I could go with that. But Anything, anything else? Even the parts that we agree are, are good like, like that should be in a bill on its own. It shouldn't be in a Christmas tree bill that you lump everything together and you force senators and delegates to vote on, if you want to vote for the pay raise, then you have to vote for all the bad things that happen. No person should have to make that decision on a vote. Everything should be on its own. You should put these bills out there on their own merit. Some of the reform they're talking about, like the charter schools and the edu education savings accounts, have been around for a couple years and they couldn't get them passed. So their idea of, of reform is let's lump it in with the pay raise and now we're going to force people. Do you want to p p vote on the pay or do you and accept these bad things or vote against it? That's, in my opinion, it's their idea way of saying we really are not serious about investment in education. We don't want the pay raise to happen so we're going to force you to make a decision. All right, we only have a, a moment left you know, what most people want to know is, is, is are, are there deer, deal breakers in here? Or would, would teachers contemplate another walkout over what's contained in this bill? You know, that's just so far down the road. We can't do that every year. That was, that was a historic moment last year, and West Virginia did wake up this nation with our walkout. It has traveled across the country and across the world. We just had success with the teachers who walked out in uh, Los Angeles. The United Teachers of Los Angeles got everything that they wanted in their walkout, and one of those things was smaller class sizes. So you, you have to be very careful about that. But I will say this, our teachers and our service personnel, they're paying very close attention to what our legislators are proposing. All right, that'll have to be our last word today. Uh, Fred Albert of the American Federation of Teachers, West Virginia chapter, Dale Lee of the West Virginia Education Association. Thank you both for joining us tonight. Thank you. Thank you. The Broadband Expansion Act of 2019 is up for passage tomorrow in the House as the Senate continues work on its own bill to further broadband expansion. Tonight, Belize spoke to the sponsors of those bills. Members of the Senate are pushing Senate Bill 3, the West Virginia Small Wireless Facilities Deployment Act. Representatives in the House wrote House Bill 2005, the Broadband Expansion Act of 2019. For too long, we've been left behind with access to the internet, and there's been no revolution in in, in society um, since the industrial revolution, since the steam engine, um, since the advent of electricity that has so transformed the way that we live our lives, the way that we conduct business, and the way that we bring people up um, into prosperity. So it's it's incredibly important for all of West Virginia. 
As lead sponsor of House Bill 2005, Delegate Daniel Linville says the bill has provisions for 5G wireless technologies, for running new middle mile fiber, and trying to connect the entire state of West Virginia to the broader internet and the world as a whole. This is one more step in that, in that direction to take us to the next level, to be on the forefront of 5G technologies, which are going to be transformative for the entire industry, um, and which will help to connect everyone to the greatest library that's ever been in the history of humanity, and that's the internet. Linville says the bill also includes a $50 million investment from AT&T to put new 5G small cell antennas throughout the state, half going to unincorporated areas. This isn't just a big city bill or just a rural area bill. It's for everyone from Martinsburg to Milton and from Huntington to Hurricane and from Wayne to Welch. So it's, it's for all of us. Establishing the West Virginia Small Wireless Facilities Deployment Act, Senator Greg Bozo says this bill allows wireless providers to put in new 5G technology, connecting wireless networks at faster speeds. It allows business to move at the speed of light, and uh, we need to do everything that we can within West Virginia to allow business and industry to grow, to develop, and to be able to market their goods uh, in other regions of the, of the nation and across the world. Senator Bozo says through this bill, new ways to utilize existing infrastructure are being found to reach underserved areas successfully. We want West Virginia to be a place where we attract business and industry. Uh, we want to make it so that local entrepreneurs who decide, yeah, I want to open my own business, they need to be able to connect on a worldwide basis to get their products and market and services into the marketplace and allow others, whether it's here in West Virginia, whether it's in Minnesota or California or around the world, maybe in Malaysia, we need to be able to allow them to market their products and services around the world that way. Senator Bozo says this bill is also designed to attract large scale manufacturing to the state. When we start talking about places like Korea, China, uh, those types of, of entities who have markets that we would like to draw in here for, so that they can utilize our raw products, the wood industry is a perfect example. We want them to do finished goods here in West Virginia. Senator Boso says if these bills are adopted, they will not only improve business climate, but also the educational landscape, allowing students across the state access to online class assignments and other educational materials from home. For the legislature today, I'm Denite Belay. I'm Suzanne Higgins. Thanks for joining us. Have a good evening. consistently report that they are more likely to use a service or buy a product from a company that also supports public broadcasting. To become a partner with us in telling West Virginia's story, call our community support staff today. I'll see you tomorrow morning, nine sharp. Why? I'm going to need an assistant. You fit the bill. Molly Cooper's new job. We're a bit short-handed, apparently there's a war on. Can't say a notice. Isn't for the faint of heart.